the date was May, 1953. The place, Nevada. And just outside the town of Las Vegas, at Nellis Air Force Base, a series of events took place. Events not included in routine airfield operations. The 280 millimeter guns were taken off their railroad flat cars and started on the 65 mile journey to the Atomic Energy Commission's Nevada Proving Ground, where they would provide the proof of their atomic might. On their way through Las Vegas, the big guns experienced no trouble whatsoever in negotiating the city streets. On the sharpest of turns, however, was where they really proved their mettle. Handled exactly like the biggest hook and ladder trucks of any fire department, but some 30 feet longer and many tons heavier, the guns took every twist and turn in stride. They are big, but flexible. Once out of Las Vegas, they settled down to the long grind north to the proving ground. During field operations involving the 280 millimeter gun, they travel in batteries, such as these. A battery consists of two guns. Three batteries make up a battalion. The battalions provide support for field army or separate corps action. There are, with each battery, nine support vehicles, acting as transports for gun personnel, supplies, and ammunition. In convoy on hard-topped highways, the guns can travel at 30 miles per hour, and in spite of their road weight of 76 tons, can use the standard army bridges wherever necessary. 70 miles north of Las Vegas was the turnoff to the firing site. In 1944, when the original design specifications were drawn up, the gun was to have been a 240 millimeter weapon. However, these specifications were soon changed by the rapidly advancing artillery capabilities and the foreshadowing of the atomic age. Instead, were substituted the designs for a 280 millimeter weapon with not only HE, but atomic firepower. In 1951, the gun was tested as a normal artillery piece at Aberdeen. Needless to say, these tests were successful. All that remained was to check out its other capability, the atomic shell. Even on secondary roads or rough terrain, the guns retain relatively high mobility in spite of the fact that their speeds are lowered to approximately 10 miles per hour. The main reason for this mobility are the prime movers connected to the front and the rear of each weapon. Each prime mover is capable of 365 horsepower. Just one of these cabs has 50% more payload than the largest western highway truck. For a heavyweight fighter, the big guns are light on their toes. Once at the firing site, the line of fire was given and the guns were directed to their respective emplacements. After getting into position, the rear cab lowers the gun and moves away. Then the front cab winches the tube into battery and moves away. Unlike field operations of World War II, 